<sighs> Gotta put together that bookshelf today. Oh, I ran out of coffee, so I had to go get beans and the beans were pre-ground and not my favorite cup of coffee, gonna be honest. So 2022 was a year of very creative endeavors for me. I finally committed to building this YouTube channel. And I also, this was also the first year of Rust Adventure. I was gonna take you on an adventure to go get coffee, but everything is closed today. So we're left with this coffee. So let's start with Rust Adventure first and then get into the YouTube and other things later. Rust Adventure is what allows this channel to continue. It's what funds the videos that I produce both here in a raw unscripted form and also on Rust Adventure itself and any other places where Rust Adventure is more polished and researched and user driven and things like that. This is the first year it existed, which overall went pretty well, but there were some bumps in the road for sure. Starting off, I had to build the Rust Adventure infrastructure, the very first implementation, uh, pretty quickly within like a week or two, because while I did have a partner originally that fell through at kind of the most inopportune time for it to fall through. So I was left with having to figure out how to build and deliver both video and payments and the website itself and amongst other things as fast as possible, basically. Unfortunately, I've been paying for that tech debt ever since, which is totally fine. This is like a five year long project for me, but it's something that I have to deal with. The Rust Adventure launch went pretty well, actually really, really well. It was the most successful digital educational product that I've shipped so far. So I'm very happy with that. I launched it originally with lifetime pricing, which allowed me to give back to the people who have supported me for a while with the ability to pay one time and get my updates forever, since I know this project is going to live for a long time, while also giving me a base of some sustainability to be able to use that income to continue to develop it for more people or a wider audience. As the year progressed, uh, it quickly became apparent to me that if I wanted to extend this over a five year life cycle, then I would have to change the pricing model. One time lifetime pricing doesn't necessarily support that much effort. So I wanted to change to a subscription pricing model for Rust Adventure. And if you've ever been a consultant an indie developer or a freelancer even, you know that subscriptions are a harder pricing model to succeed at rather than single one-off pricing. However, it fits much better with what I'm trying to achieve with Rust Adventure, and it allows me to continue to reinvest in Rust Adventure every month. So for example, Bevy ships a release every three months. Some frameworks are slower, some frameworks are faster. There's new workshops that need to go up and be researched, amongst other things like the cost of just updating the site, introducing new features, uh, making it overall a better educational learning experience. Overall, I'm pretty happy with Rust Adventure and how it's panned out over the last year or so. And I'm excited to see what I can do with it in 2023 and beyond that. This video, however, is only about 2022 and the last year. So I'm gonna move on to talking about YouTube. I've wanted to run a YouTube channel for a long time and beyond just like going to VidCon and things like 2013, I've made various attempts over the years, shipping a couple of videos here and there. Nothing I really committed to though. So obviously that's why I didn't have a channel. <laughs> I'm happy to say that this year, I made two real attempts at growing a YouTube channel that I could sustain over a longer period of time. The first attempt was not that successful. It was some kind of like releasey news kind of videos and then like occasional other videos that I could figure out when I could figure them out. The release schedule was either inconsistent or a couple days a week, which really wasn't enough to actually get people interested. I didn't have enough of a backlog. So if somebody liked a video that I made, it was often just a video about a release that happened this week and not a back catalog of videos that they could go through either to learn something or to be entertained or anything really. But then I started making daily videos and that was phenomenally successful. Daily videos has been an absolute resounding success. I'm so awestruck that so many of you show up daily to watch some Rust video that I put together or whatever I decide to make a video on on that day. Thank you all so much for showing up and participating in this community and watching these videos and leaving your comments. I really enjoy participating in that. Posting daily videos took this channel from under a thousand subscribers to what looks like it's going to be 10,000 pretty soon. And that was over the course of about six months. So it's been about, I would say roughly 120 videos over the last six months, probably five a week. And then the advent of code videos were every day for sure. And then some days I shipped more. So yeah, we'll call it like 120 so far, excluding the first half of the year. <laughs> Daily videos wasn't all positives either though. I started the idea in January or February of last year. And I talked to a couple people about it and 
I got almost universally negative reactions to it. Nobody thought it was a good idea. Nobody thought it was sustainable. People were worried about burnout. There was a whole bunch of stuff, a whole, a whole bunch of varied reactions, none of which were particularly positive. And unfortunately, no hate to those people because they're just, you know, I asked them for feedback and they gave me feedback and they're my friends. But I unfortunately let that feedback, even though I knew it was what I wanted to do and I knew how to do it sustainably, I let that let me put off doing daily videos for another six months. So I didn't get started until halfway through the year, even though I knew it's what I wanted to do. I knew it was useful. I knew people would like it and I knew it would allow me to produce a wider variety of content over time. I don't really know what to take from that other than if you've done your research and you know something is what you want to do, then don't take other people's feedback into account unless it's like safety issues or something like that. You know, if you're confident in your ability to do something and it's something that you want to do, or at least give a try, then you should go do it. I also started doing TikToks this year or YouTube shorts. Um, I always pause after I say something like that because I'm like, am I supposed to say another platform on this platform? <laughs> but it doesn't matter on YouTube. The TikTok videos I've produced haven't had a large amount of success. I haven't really figured out a style that works for me. I haven't really figured out a production schedule or a production routine that works for me for producing them in the first place. So I'm hoping to improve on that in the next year. But at the same time, I had people search me on TikTok or search for Rust on TikTok, for example, and then show up in a Discord voice channel the next day saying, hey, yeah, last night I looked up Rust on TikTok and I found you and now I'm here. And coming face to face with the idea that there are real people watching the videos that I create on platforms, even when I'm just experimenting and I don't know what I'm doing and they're finding them useful is just an amazing thing to come like face to face with. So that was absolutely very cool. Other than that, I've been kind of tweeting less. Uh, Twitter is kind of going downhill. I don't know if it'll die or not, which makes it tough because my primary platform over the last 10 years has been Twitter, especially when it comes to doing consulting work, which has been a large portion of my programming career. I have got a more than decade long career at this point. I started out as a freelancer. I took some bouts of employment and then I spent most of my career independent doing either more contracts or consulting, mostly for startups and things like that. But Twitter was a huge part of that and a huge part of gaining those contracts and maintaining those professional relationships. So it seems like a bunch of people are moving to Mastodon, a bunch of people in my professional sphere in the tech space. And that's great, but it also feels like everybody split into various corners. So there's a server that has a bunch of tech people, let's say, uh, that's very popular and well run by some of the most experienced professional SREs in the business, which is wonderful. That's where I have my account. And there's also Mastodon instances for like any other interest. So because I created my account on that instance, it makes it really hard to interact with anybody that's doing say game dev on the game dev instance, or there isn't just one game dev instance, there's a whole plethora of them. And it seems like you have to have an account in like every different place to participate in any given interest, which I've found really difficult and has led to me tweeting less both on Twitter and on Mastodon. Although I will say that I've kind of been replacing that with video and I'm really enjoying video. So I'm going to continue doing the part that I'm enjoying right now, video, and I will still have my other accounts and other places, but I think for the next year, I'm gonna focus on video, but we'll see. Overall, 2022 was a great year. I produced a lot of videos. I produced a lot of useful educational content. I made some money that allowed me to support doing that more. And thus I was able to help more people. I was able to ship a bunch of videos to a YouTube channel that then you showed up to because you're watching this and this is on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> that hopefully you found the videos either entertaining or useful or informative. And I just really appreciate you being here. So thank you for showing up, for watching this, for participating in any capacity. And I really appreciate you. And I will see you in 2023. I've got to go make this bookshelf now. <laughs>